After playing almost 100 hours of City Skylines 2, there has been one thing pressing at the front of my mind, and that is how to improve performance, and I have tried everything. However, after yesterday's day one release patch, I found the sweet spot for my PC, increasing frames by 300% or more on 4K with just a couple of settings being changed. But before we cover that, we do need to talk about my hardware. We'll start off with my CPU, that's a Ryzen 9 5900X, it's actually not been overclocked. We also have 96 gigabytes of RAM alongside an RTX 3080 Ti with the game being saved on an M.2 drive. Now I can play most games on 4K and until recently I've been confused as to why I could only scrape 10 FPS, sometimes not even that, on 4K when opening a new game in Cities Skylines 2. I've tried game drivers and studio drivers and despite other creators hitting 50 FPS or more on their systems using RTX 3070s and less RAM and still using the same CPU, I've been unable to reach more than 32 FPS myself, and knowing that Colossal Order want to get a smooth 30 FPS for everyone, it wouldn't surprise me if some of us have been capped by hardware that hasn't been optimized yet. And yes, I have checked Nvidia's control panel to make sure that I haven't been capped at 30 FPS on there as well. Now I do say that we've been capped because after these changes that we're going to make, you'll actually notice that when we run at 30 FPS in 4K, we're getting that exact same performance on all other resolutions as well. And let's be honest, if you're getting 30 FPS on 4K, you'd expect it to be higher in lower resolutions if the frames weren't being capped somewhere along the line. Now because of this, though I mainly see an improvement of about 200% more frames, you may see more. And if you do, please do make sure to subscribe for more useful Cities Skylines 2 guides on my channel and let me know what kind of boosts you get to your FPS in game and what hardware you're using because I am very curious as to what the problem is for me. Now obviously, with us each having different hardware, you may have to tweak these following settings to fit your PC, but seeing the gain that I've personally received, you should be able to see what it is that you need to tweak in order to get the right kind of frame optimization that we are. So. First off, you can see that we're in game on a map with 19k population. This is the Archipelago Haven map. I think I've said that name right. I definitely said it wrong in our Let's Play series. I'll, I'll attach the first episode to this so that you can check the video at the end of this um, video or in the descriptions below. Regardless, we have 14, uh, 19k population on this map, and if you look at the top left hand corner, you can see we have our FPS counter, and in the right hand corner, we have our NVIDIA performance overlay. And I've noticed at the base high settings that we get this kind of frame rate, both on large maps like this, and also fresh new maps, or maps with lower population. And the following changes that we're going to make should help in all situations. But for this, I'm going to be using my most performance intensive save, which is this one currently. Now, the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you have the right screen resolution selected. This sounds silly, but sometimes this will be defaulted to a blank resolution and just by setting it, it can make all the difference. Obviously, if you don't have the hardware to run the recommended game specs, consider downscaling your resolution. For me, I can play at 4K with the following changes up until about 15K population. At that point, I downscale to 1440p or I lower the graphics quality from high to medium just to ensure that my frames are smooth throughout. Now, if you are happy with your screen resolution at this point, the next setting to change is the depth of field. By disabling this, you can give yourself a hefty boost to your frames, and for me, at the highest settings, this can double my frame rate. We then have global graphics quality. Now, if your PC is struggling, this can be reduced step by step until you find a match. However, I tend to leave this at first, tweaking the highest graphics settings individually to give you the best viewing experience. 
Next, we have dynamic resolution scale quality. And I've heard a few people, both on the Discord and other videos, suggest staying away from this. And I'm not sure as to why. Because by enabling some sort of dynamic resolution scale quality, you can greatly boost your FPS. For example, by enabling AMD's Fidelity FX, I've been able to more than double my FPS. The great thing about Fidelity is also that it works across platforms, so if you do have an NVIDIA card like myself, it can still greatly help whilst we wait for DLSS support. Anti-aliasing is the next thing that we should look at. Uh, this isn't so much to do with FPS, but it can help if you're trying to take photos. So the anti-aliasing is going to help smooth out any jagged edges on shapes that are being rendered. Now I recommend keeping it to high or low SMAA, however if you are looking to take cleaner photos, you can go to the advanced section and activate the temporal anti-aliasing. This is the TAA um, category. As this uses AI to smooth frames by looking at past frames and then predicting future frames. And this can create ghosting or blurriness when looking at moving vehicles. However, for photos, it should make edges render better as it'll render the moment that's been captured. That's why I wouldn't recommend it for just using in general and specifically if you're trying to take really nice looking photos. The following options all impact the game slightly. So I recommend tweaking these based on experience and experimenting. However, cloud volumetrics can be disabled. This often gives you a couple of extra frames and along with that depth of field and motion blur settings. They will help considerably as well. Another notable setting is cloud's quality settings. Disabling this hasn't boosted my frames, but it does result in a much brighter image, which I personally prefer, especially on the dreary, wet, rainy maps, such as the one that we're on currently. And finally, the last setting that I'd recommend changing if you're wanting to squeeze extra frames is the level of detail setting. Lowering it from high to medium results in very few changes that I can see, so I'm not sure if this is in regards to the distance that LODs load up and upscale their, their detailing, or if it's specifically what detail is shown when viewing a building. But what I have noticed about this is that by lowering it, you do get more FPS. So there we are, hopefully by the end of this video you'll now be getting better performance out of your game, but at the same time it's important to remember that Colossal Order are aware of the issue, they've been very vocal about this, and they do plan to continue optimizing the game well into its launch. So with a little bit of luck we'll all be able to enjoy a smooth gaming experience. But guys, thank you so much for watching, do let me know what you'd like me to cover in the next City Skylines 2 video in the comments below, do check out my Let's Play as well. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our solo clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh and Treble, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben, Star and That Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the Viking Brit. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.